Welcome to our broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. My wife Norma and I are so glad that you've taken your time to tune into our program today. And I have no doubt that God is going to speak to you today and encourage you from His Word as we proclaim Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Remember, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. We believe that the more you listen to messages that proclaim Jesus Christ, your faith will be stirred up and you'll be encouraged to rise up, believe and receive all that God has already made available for you through Jesus. much for joining me once again and if this is the first time probably you've joined me thank you so much for taking your time also to tune to our program I've been sharing on the message that I've entitled Christ crucified about preaching Christ crucified and I've started looking from um, 1st Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 22 to 24 where the Apostle Paul says for Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Greeks and Jews, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. So I've been sharing about how Christ, how Christ Jesus and how his work on Calvary is, is what is needed in our lives is what we need for every situation that we can be facing. How Christ and his finished work of Calvary is the source and the solution to every situation we can be facing. And I've been saying right now, for whatever situation, for whatever need that you can have in this world, the answer is found in Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross. If I can help you today to know Jesus better, and if I can help you realize who he is and help you realize what he accomplished for you on the cross. And I have no doubt that the more you know him and the more you realize what he accomplished for you on the cross, I have no doubt that your life will never be the same. Because the more you look to Jesus Christ, the more you, keep, you fix your eyes on him, the more his life will be drawn towards you. The more what he accomplished for you in Calvary will begin to flow flow freely into your life and you will live a victorious life in this world. Praise the name of the Lord. So as I've been continuing, I've looked at a number of things and how we need to never take away our eyes from Jesus, but always keep our eyes on him as is the beginning and the ending of our faith. So as I finished the other message, I had begun uh, looking closely at who is this Jesus? And I started on looking at the Bible, that the Bible calls him God himself, that the Bible refers to him as God, that yes, he came in this world, yes, he was born, um, he was born, and he, he was born from Mary, and the Bible, the Bible says he was born in a manger, and he grew up from there, and at, at the age of 30, he began his public ministry. But then I pointed to, to you also, um, I pointed in the other message, that even though he, he, he lived amongst us as a human being, but yet he was fully God himself. He was God himself from the beginning to the end. Hallelujah. He is, he, Jesus is God himself. And in, I began to point to us that our Christian faith is wonderful because Jesus is God himself. Our God is one, but yet he's, he's, he consists of three persons, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are all co-equal. They are all the, the same, they've, they've got different personalities. Yes, they are different persons with different personalities and different um, characters, but they are all one. So when we talk about God, we don't talk about three gods, we are talking about one God, who is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So when I talk about the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about God himself. When I talk about Jesus, I'm talking about God himself. When I'm talking about the Father, I'm talking about God himself. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. They are unique and they've got, they're, they're three different persons. And that's why we need to, to grow in our relationship. And every one of, uh, in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I'm just looking today at Jesus Christ, 
praise the name of the Lord, hallelujah, that he came into this world and he was born as a human being amongst us, but yet he was fully God, hallelujah. And we did look in the previous message, um, uh, it, we, we had looked a little bit at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, and I'm going to quickly read it again, where the Bible um, says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, for to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the Bible, Isaiah was prophesying hundreds of years before Jesus came. And he said, he's going to come. He's going to be, he's going to be, He's going to be born amongst us. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. And when the angel came and spoke to Joseph, the angel pointed Joseph, who was the husband of Mary, and pointed to Joseph um, the, the prophets that Isaiah had made about how the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And I did say in the previous message that this didn't mean that Jesus was to be called Emmanuel, but this was pointing to, to his identity, that Jesus Christ is God, is God with us, hallelujah. He came into this world and lived amongst us as a human being, but many people didn't even recognize when he came here and walked as a man, hallelujah. He came and lived amongst us, but the Bible tells us when you look at him, Philippians chapter two, that even though he was God, but yet he did put aside his role as God and lived as a, as a, as a, a human being amongst us. He lived as a man. But even though yet he was fully God, he, he chose to live as a man and lived as a human being just like every one of us. So Jesus, yes, he lived 100% as a human being, 100% like you and me. But the Bible tells us that he was tempted in every way and was without sin. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he, he knows what we go through because he lived in this world. He knows every situation you can be facing because he's lived amongst us as a human being. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I like what, um, what the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, referring to Jesus. As I, as, I, as I begin to show you from the scriptures that Jesus is indeed God. He was God before he came to this world. He was God when he walked here on earth. He was God when he hung on that cross. But yet, when he walked here on earth, he set aside his privileges. He set aside his role as God and lived as a human being. And hallelujah. Yes, he died as a human being and bled blood as a human being, but that does not divorce the fact that he was still yet fully God. Hallelujah. I can be, I can, someone can be a prince of, 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 of Britain and he can come and work in a company and work as a, as a cleaner. He can choose to work as a cleaner and be treated like a cleaner, but that does not change the fact that he's a prince. But it doesn't change that fact. God was, Jesus was God when he walked here on earth and he did everything he did as, as as, as, as a human being who was fully dependent on God the Father. Even though he, had, he was God, he put aside his role as, as God and lived as a human being and lived in complete dependence on God the Father. Hallelujah. God lived on a body that limited him. Remember I read in, remember what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse five. That it says, therefore when Christ came into the world, he, into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Hallelujah. A body was prepared for him, and he walked on this body, and he lived as a human being, and he walked amongst human beings, even though he was fully God himself. Hallelujah. And John chapter 1 tells us that um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in, in, in verse 14, in, John, in chapter 1, they John chapter uh, 14, verse 1, it tells us that the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, 
full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. So it's referring to Jesus Christ as the word. Hallelujah. So in the beginning was Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word, Jesus Christ. And the word was with God, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the word was God, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. As I, this is the wonderful truth. As I, as I want you to understand, the devil hates it. The devil hates for Jesus Christ to be revealed and be shown to us as God himself who lived amongst us as a human being. Hallelujah. Praise God and walked amongst us. And in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. Hallelujah. When Christ was here on earth, the fullness of God lived in him. Hallelujah. Praise God. He was fully God, but yet he walked and lived as a, a, as, as a man amongst us. This is a wonderful mystery. This is a wonderful mystery how God is one, yet he's made of, he consists of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yet he's one. Some people, when they hear, they say, oh, he's three gods. No, he's not three gods. He's one. Hallelujah. In fact, I like what, um, at what the First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says. I like it. I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. It says in First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, he says, without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Hallelujah. He says, Christ was revealed in a human body and vindicated by the Spirit. He was seen by angels and announced to the nations. He was believed in throughout the world and taken to heaven in glory. Hallelujah. He says, without question, this is a great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in a human body and vindicated by the Spirit. This is a great mystery. Hallelujah. Yet to us it is revealed. To a man without the Spirit of God, it is foolishness. It doesn't make sense to him. But yet to us we understand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, 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 and, so why was Jesus, why did Jesus Christ in the first place, why did he come? If he was fully God and he was God before even before the the world was created. Why did God come and live amongst us as a human being? Why did Jesus Christ come into this world to live as a human being amongst us? The answer, the answer is found in John chapter 10, verse 10. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus Christ said some amazing things. He said an amazing statement. He said, um, he says, I came that you may have life. He says, I came that you may have life and life in abundance. Jesus said, Christ said, I came that you may have life. He came to give us life. That's what he was saying. He said, I've come that you may have life. If I say it to you right now, I've come to you that you may have life today. What is the impl implication? The implication is that you don't have life. So when Jesus Christ was saying to us, I've come that you may have life. He was simply saying, you don't have a life. I've come to give you life. Hallelujah. So what it simply meant is, we didn't have a life. Without Jesus Christ, there was no life in mankind. And Jesus Christ came to give us that life. Hallelujah. I like what the, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, as for you, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Hallelujah. It says we were, dead. we were dead. The Bible tells us, it confirms the same thing, that we were dead in our sins. We were dead. And in, in Ephesians 2 verse 5, the Bible also tells us that God made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses. So we were dead and we needed life. And Jesus Christ came to give us that life. Hallelujah. And there are so many scriptures that point to this fact that there was no life for mankind. And Jesus Christ came to give us that life. So mankind was walking and living and doing whatever we're doing, but yet mankind did not realize that they were dead and they needed life. And this is what I want to share with you today, that without Jesus Christ, there is no life. Mankind without Christ has no life. And I'm going to show you from the word of God today. And if you're listening to me today, 
This is not to insult you. But without God, you don't have a life. There is no life without God. Without Jesus Christ, there is no life. Hallelujah. Amen. And I know maybe you probably think right now, if I can, if I can come, I know if I can ask you today, if I can come into a room where there are Christians and say to every one of the people right there and say to them, why do you think Jesus Christ came into this world? I can guarantee you most of the people will lift up their hands and say to, and say to me, he came to die for our sins. That's a wonderful truth. I'm not denying that. It's a wonderful truth. Yes, he came to die for our sins. But, but we had a greater need than our sins. We had a bigger problem more than our sins. Our biggest problem that mankind had was the, the biggest need, if, if, if I can put it this way, the biggest need mankind had was not the forgiveness of sins. Yes, the forgiveness of sins was important, but the biggest need mankind had was that mankind did not have life. What mankind needed more than the forgiveness of sins was life. Hallelujah. Without life, even the forgiveness doesn't help you. If, you, if I come to a dead corpse, a dead person, and I give that person forgiveness, if they are dead, that forgiveness does not help. If they are dead, forgiveness will not benefit them in any way. But if I can raise that person and bring that person to life and then give them forgiveness, that is more wonderful. Hallelujah. Forgiveness of our sins was very, very important. Don't misunderstand me. But forgiveness was a means to an end. Hallelujah. Forgiveness was a means to an end. And the end was life for us to receive life. Jesus forgave us. So Jesus came to bring us forgiveness so that we can receive life. The end, the forgiveness was a means to an end. And the end was life. The main goal for Jesus to come into this world was to give us life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Was to give mankind back life. There was no life in us, and Jesus Christ came to give us, give us that life. And I'm going to show Shay more about this, and I pray that by the help of the Holy Spirit, you will understand this very well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you might be think, thinking, if you are saying, we didn't have life, so what did we have? I told you we had death. We were dead. Hallelujah. And when did we die, you may ask? What do you mean we were dead? What does that mean? When did we die? The Bible, the, the, the Bible is the answer. It points us, if I can take you back to the beginning of every, where everything began. If I take, can take you back to the book of Genesis, chapter 2. Hallelujah. Do you remember there in, in verse 17, somewhere there, when God spoke to Adam, um, and when God spoke to them and said, you shall eat of every tree in the garden, but you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. God told them, and, and God had created these wonderful people, Adam and Eve, and he, he had done everything wonderful for them, and he had put them in this wonderful garden called Eden. And, and they had everything that they needed. And he told them, he said, you've got everything you need. But don't just eat, don't eat from this tree. Only don't eat from this tree. And then he said to them, for the day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. And as we know the story, Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God. And they went ahead and ate from that tree. Hallelujah. And God is not the son of man that he can lie or change his mind. And the day they ate of that tree, as God had said, they died. But we know that Adam and Eve didn't drop dead that moment they ate the tree. In fact, they went on to live. Adam lived more than 900 years on earth. But what, but the Bible says, but God had told them they will die. So what happened? Did it mean they were going to die 900 years later? No, they died immediately when they disobeyed God at that moment. They died spiritually. Hallelujah. They died spiritually. The moment they ate of that tree, they died spiritually. And this is what I'm going to share with you today. Because you see, my brothers and sisters, and you, I want you to know something. I want you to know, dear loved ones, that you may be looking at me right now, 
but you cannot see me. You can be looking at me. All you can see right now is the physical part of me. You can see my body, but you cannot see me. I, every, this, is, this is the wonderful thing. You are a spirit being and you live in a body. You are a spirit being and you live and you dwell in a body. Hallelujah. You are a spirit being and you live and dwell in a body. That's why when a person dies, we, we say this whether we understand it or not, we say the person is gone, but the body will be right there in front of us. But we say, oh, he's gone. He's not there. And then we take the, 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 the body and we, we take it back and the body will decompose and be, and be gone on, on, the, on the soil. But the, where will you be? It doesn't mean it's the end of the thing. If a person dies, it doesn't mean it's over. It's far from over. You don't end there. It doesn't end there. But I want, because you are a spirit being, you will return to the spirit world. But it depends if you've got Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Of course, you will return. You will go to heaven and spend life with God. But when without God, if you've rejected Christ as your Lord and Savior, you won't spend life with God. You will spend life in, 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 on the other side. You will spend life in, in hell. But thank God today you can have an opportunity to know Jesus and that, so that when you pass through this world, you can spend life with God. But back to what I was saying, you are a spirit being and, and you live in a body. Adam also was a spirit being living in a body. So when, when they ate of the tree, they died spiritually. What does it mean? Did it mean their spirit man ceased to exist? No, otherwise they would have dropped dead and, and, and they, they were not going to exist. But it simply means, as we know about death, if you know about death, death means there is absence of life. So when they died spiritual, when they disobeyed God, God withdrew his life from them. He withdrew, the Holy Spirit withdrew from them because they had chosen to rebel against God. They had chosen their own independence from God. They had chosen to be gods of their own life. In fact, they are in, their rebellion, in their rebellion, they were simply saying, God, we don't need you. We don't need you in our life. We don't want you to tell us what is right and wrong. We can be our gods ourselves. We can decide what is good and what is right for ourselves. So we, need, we don't need God, we can do without you. And they rebelled from God and God withdrew his spirit from them and they died. They didn't realize that they were living, they were, they were alive because of the spirit of God in them. Well, so when the Holy Spirit withdrew from them, when they disobeyed, they died spiritually, which means there was, they didn't have the life of God flowing in through them anymore. They didn't have the life of God flowing to, to, to them, to their spirit men anymore. Now they were disconnected from God and they were, good, they were dead. Without the life of God in them, they were dead. They couldn't, they couldn't anymore, they couldn't anymore live in fellowship with God as they had done before. Because God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And so before, when they were connected with God, they could fellowship with God, they could relate with God, they could, they, they, they could live the life God required them to live because God's life was flowing through them. It was the life of God that was enabling them to to, to live victorious. It was the life of God that was enabling them to live a life that is, uh, that, that is, is above sin and all that. But when they rebelled from God, they became mere natural men. They never, be, they, they stopped being some, they stopped being supernatural men to being intent to be what? Some natural men. Without God, they were nothing. Without God, without the life of God flowing in them, they couldn't please God. They couldn't do the things of God any, that please God anymore. They couldn't live a life that was pleasing to God anymore because it's only the life of God flowing through you that can enable you to live a victorious life in this world. It's only the life of God that can cause you to live above sin, above a, anything, discouragement, above uh, condemnation, above anything that comes against you, the life of God inside of you is the one that can enable you to live that life. But without the life of God, they became 
me a natural man. And the Bible tells us when they rebelled from God, God withdrew from them. But what they didn't realize is now, because without God, they were no longer having the power and the authority even over, over the devil who is the enemy of God. Now the devil came and enslaved them. And the Bible says, from then they became slaves of sin. And sin began to produce evil inside of them. And before they realized they were doing evil, because why? They were no longer connected to the life of God. But now they were connected to the life of the evil one. And the, life, and the evil one was now producing evil through them. And sin living inside of them was producing evil through them. And now they could no longer live, they could no longer live the life of God, the life of God requires. Without God, without the life of God living inside of us, we are hopeless sinners, we are helpless, we cannot please God, we cannot do the right thing. In fact, I like what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 7. He says, the things I want to do, I cannot do them. The things I, the things I, want, I want to do, I cannot do them. The things I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. He says, what a helpless person am I? Then he says, but thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. And I'm, gonna be, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the answer and the, the way out. Because when you come to Christ, he gives you life. He restores you back to God. And the life of God is connected back to you. And you can live a victorious life and please God. And I, I'm going I'm to continue sharing this message, but I'm going to stop here for now. I was beginning to, to share this, but I'm going to continue in this. But I want to give you an opportunity to know Jesus Christ. I don't want to close this program without know, you knowing Christ. If you want to know Jesus, and you say, I want the life of God in me. I want to be able to live the life God created me to live. Jesus died for your sins, and today he offers you forgiveness. If you pray with me today, I'm going to help you pray and invite Christ into your heart. Say, dear Father in heaven, I accept that I'm a sinner. I accept that Jesus Christ died for my sins. And today, Father, I, I realize I've been on the wrong. I ask you to forgive me and take me back home and, and accept me as your, as your own and make me your child and put, give me your life once again that I may live for you and I may live a victorious life in this world as Jesus is my Lord, is my Savior. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, simple prayer, Jesus is your Lord now and is your Savior, and God knows you now as his, own, as his own child. I encourage you, if you can contact us, contact us. We would like to encourage you in your faith. Find a church and go there and fellowship with them and know Jesus better and better. He loves you and bless you. Amen.